Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, the host of the show for episode 34 here and uh, coming up in the middle part of March, I guess. Looks like we're finally going to get some spring weather here in the central part of Canada or South Ontario region and uh, looks like Northeast as well. So thanks for tuning in to the show where my motto is educating minds one tailpipe at a time. That's what I try to do here is provide education and knowledge in what's going on with the fascinating and fast paced world of electric vehicles and stories that cover them. So let me get right into a few things I've got for you today. First story for this week is Nissan's pricing announcement in North America for the Leaf E+. Plus. Um, they released some U.S. and Canadian pricing over the last few days, uh, which is as follows. So for the uh, E+, Plus, the Model S, with the S trim, it's $36,550. For the SV trim, it's $38,510. And for the SL, it's $42,550. These are USD numbers. Canadian pricing is $44,900 for the S+, Plus, $46,600. For the SV Plus and 49.5 for the SL. I know on the Plus models, a Pro Pilot, I believe, is a standard feature across the board, which is something it wasn't before. Now it is. And you can check out the Nissan's website for all the specs on what you get at that pricing levels. Now, my understanding is at some point this year, from uh, Canadians uh, for, uh, to deal with Canadian consumers, that uh, only the SV model of the 40 kilowatt hour current leaf, that does the Gen 2 that came out in 2018 model year, will be available at some uh, at some point. I, I'm 100% sure. I remember Nissan uh, in my interview with Francois, actually, he mentioned that they were going to just have one model uh, in Canada available of the 40 kilowatt hour. And that makes sense. That's their number one selling trim line in the leaf package is the SV. So it does make sense if they're going to just trim it down um, to that particular model that seems to be the most popular from a value pricing. So keep an eye on that. If you're still interested in the 40 kilowatt, uh, check out the Nissan's website in Canada to see if that's still available. Last time I looked, it was, so not sure when this is going to take effect. It might, uh, might not, but that's what I had heard from Nissan. So good to see pricing out. Comparable to the Model 3, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, again, everything has pros and cons, but uh, do your research and check things out. And uh, we'll keep our eye out. I'll keep our my eye out on the Nissan sales and see how they do this year. Now, still staying with the Nissan trend on Nissan sales, as a matter of fact, for the Leaf uh, this week, and uh, Nissan officially announced that they've surpassed the 400,000 sales unit sales for the Leaf, uh, and it makes it the number one or continues to be the number one uh, best world selling battery electric or zero emission all electric vehicle uh, globally for the uh, single model. Uh, I think Nissan is very happy with the, the little niche that they've carved out. Uh, I shouldn't say too little because 400,000 is nothing to sneeze at. It's a, certainly a good number, but they're quite happy with the, the market that they're going after and uh, with the products that they have. Uh, in terms of uh, kilometers driven, I mean, they do track these things. There are telematics that are occurring on the Leafs. Uh, they've passed uh, 10 billion, with a B as in Bob, kilometers uh, or 6 billion miles of usage. Uh, and that has equated to saving about 3.8 million barrels of oil a year. Remember, folks, the Leaf is available. Uh, it's really one of the true global uh, market, mass market vehicles from the um, from a selling um, marketability because it is available in more than 50 markets globally and they are expanding this year to um, a total of 63 markets by the end of this year which will include more in Latin America and in uh, Asia and Oceania for later parts of this year so but congratulations on Nissan and look forward to continued success for the Leaf model line. And of course, it's car show season, and this week it's all about Geneva Auto Shows. A lot of announcements coming out, so I'm going to cover a few of those on the following few segments here on the show. For, again, st staying with Nissan one last time, Nissan came out with their IMQ concept design. So this is in addition to the IMS that I videoed in from the, the Detroit show that they announced there. Um, this is a... SUV-ish type of approach, which utilizes the hybrid e-power. So um, it's a little bit different. In Japan, they've launched this e-power concept, which is their version of hybrid, um, basically similar to a Chevy Volt um, concept. 
or a type of drivetrain where you have a battery pack that's charged by a small engine. Uh, so all the drivetrain is uh, still handled through the battery pack through the electric motors, but you've got this, you've got some, some battery range, and then you have this, uh, in this case, it's a 1.5 liter turbocharged gas engine, which continues to power a generator to provide electricity for the batteries, and you still run on that platform. Um, it's going to have two electric motors, 250 kilowatt and uh, 700 newton meters in total power for that. Um, I don't have any other, a lot of information on that. Um, I mean, I understand, you know, this is part of Nissan's um, electrified uh, movement where they're going to come out with eight new electrified models between now and 2022 and then continue progression to more models after that. Um, you know, I can see it as a, as a good stopgap. But I think folks know I'm not a true, uh, you know, I'm not not that I'm an EV purist, but I think hybrids are just a stopgap to full electric vehicles, and they're necessary for many reasons because we don't have enough choice. Still, infrastructure is growing, uh, range anxiety is still real in a lot of cases for people that want, especially want to, uh, you know, cross do a lot of long trips and so forth. And you know, these are good vehicles like plug-in hybrid electric vehicles to get people into the plug-in aspect of of uh, EV ownership, and I think that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Uh, so I, I understand where Nissan's coming from on the e-power. I'd like to see them continue more on all electric um, uh, battery-only vehicles, uh, but they are going to continue with some of these. I know they have, I think, a Versa Note in Japan that's got e-power. I think a Sentra type of equivalent as well in, in the Japan that's got similar. So they have other some other models that function under this platform. Uh, so, you know, my motto, folks, has always been a plug is a plug, and that's a good thing. A plug is a good step in the right direction uh, to continue to, to power the car. So good luck for Nissan on this and continue to watch for further announcements from them as they unveil more products over the coming uh, months and years. Well, next week's going to be pretty important for Tesla uh, as they continue to unveil stuff. Um, they Just before I went to tape this show, they came out with the announcement of upgrading the superchargers to 250 uh, kilowatts. So I'm not really going to talk a lot about that because that's a good step. But there's a lot of uh, infrastructure going on with other manufacturers that are even thresholding 350. Uh, it's a, As I mentioned in, in one of my tweets, I think the other day, it's great that Tesla is doing that. Um, it's, you know, because they are going to see more activity in their supercharger locations with the increased number of sales. And that's a good problem to have. They're selling cars and that's what we want. We want people in electric cars. So I'm glad that they're able to make that experience faster for Model 3 owners uh, in the future um, as they look to upgrade their, their supercharger stations. But really the big news for them for next week coming up is the unveiling of the Model Y, uh, the highly anticipated Model Y. Now there's some rumors that it's only going to be about 10% more cost than the Model 3. Um, it's going to take place at the Tesla's LA Design Studio on March 14th. There's no other info. There's been tons of photoshopped and concept and what leaked, maybe leaked images on this Model Y. Uh, don't believe it till you see it, folks. That's all I have to say. And, you know, it's only going to be another few days, so it's not a big wait. And uh, I think the Model Y will do very well, especially if it is priced accordingly to what to some of these rumors are leaking. So we'll have to wait and see what the specs are. But uh, Tesla's doing very well, and I wish them all the best. And uh, I'll report on what that is on my next show. Now, one article I wanted to follow up on was the Polestar 2, uh, which I showed on the last show, extensive video and coverage from Geneva. Well, Polestar, um, I'm on their distribution list, so they sent me a quick email with uh, an update that they've come out with their Explore app. They kind of talked a little bit about it on the reveal that you can use your smartphone as your key, similar to the Model 3 experience. Um, it, but in this case, they've actually um, they built this app around the vehicle. It's called the Polestar Explore app, um, and it is available on multiple on Android and iOS devices. Uh, so right now it's geared a little bit more towards the pre-ordering experience. So you can pre-order your and configure your Polestar 2 within this app, select all your features and functions and place your orders and everything. But it will also be um, a, a app to control a lot of the functionality, you know, the preconditioning, door unlocks, horn, all that kind of stuff. Uh, tracking, probably some light tracking capabilities as well. I have to wait and see what they come out with uh, once the car is available. Um, and they've also uh, taken a follow. Uh, they're very, <laughs> they're very vocal about following Tesla. Uh, that this vehicle is targeting market uh, the Tesla Model. 
three specifically, and that's okay. As I said last show, fl- you know, uh, f- uh, flat. That's the best form of flattery is being able to follow in somebody's footsteps and do what they do. So it's not a bad thing because it works. But they're also going to be opening up centrally located retail environments uh, called Polestar Spaces, um, as opposed to stores or whatever you want to call it where non-commissioned salespeople or product experts uh, are going to be talking about, uh, you know, answer questions and and basically do test drives and assist with purchases. So they are definitely following in Tesla's footsteps from a retail. They're going to open up stores. So it looks like Polestar is following in a similar concept from stores. It's all good for them as they continue to shine out in the marketplace. Good looking car, looks solid. And uh, I'm, you know, glad that they're following with the technology um, views of having apps and all that connectivity that, uh, Every, you know these kind of buyers expect so keep an eye on Polestar right my good friends at Sono Motors uh, in Germany who I did a pretty good impression review of last year when I happened to be out last fall in the southern Germany area in Bavaria lovely Bavaria it was a beautiful time of year to be there and I was able to time a media event that they were doing not too far from where I was so I went down there did some film and you can go back and search some of the shows to find that out well I'm on their mailing list and I communicate with them on a fairly regular basis and they sent me uh, some great updates that they've had uh, they've actually come out with a they're basically their final uh, des, uh, design on the on the Scion uh, concept vehicle, which I showed you last time. The primary uh, design changes on this vehicle is that they've been able to kind of embed the solar panels a little bit more pleasingly from an aesthetics viewpoint. So these are full surface uh, modules that they have on the bodywork of the Scion, and as you can see by the pictures and and that are that are running here, that it looks it doesn't stand out as much as it did in the prototypes that I saw back last year um, now in in, a, in an optimum sunny day depending on parking and you know how much sun you get throughout uh, the day of where your vehicle is uh, you can generate up to 34 kilometers of additional range a day at peak performance for the solar panel so that's pretty good and that's you know that can help I mean you know I, I travel about 25 each way to the office when I have to go 25 26 so that would be if it's out the old day parked outside with you know in the full sun uh, I can get all my mileage back basically to get back home so that's a pretty good uh, not a bad feature there they've also increased some of the dimensions in the scion so i guess they've looked at feedback uh and it looks like it's a little bit more elongated and, and uh again they still keep that safety cage and all, all that kind of stuff there uh, i think it's going to have a larger footwell and additional interior space is uh, what they're mentioning to me and they've added an additional side rear window to guarantee a little bit more uh you know optimum all-around view you know the the blind spot kind of aspect yeah more windows you have a little easier to, to get your uh, your view and the rear is a little bit more stepped up so you know with, with some some better leds and all designs and all that kind of stuff so you remember they're the first mass marketed they're going to be the first mass marketed vehicle featuring solar integration to the market and, and that solar integration on any kind of a scale you know just having a little i know the older leafs had a little solar panel that would help you know throw a little bit of juice into the 12 volt but certainly it wouldn't wouldn't affect uh, or impact the actual battery range for driving the vehicle but this is this is you know solar panels that will directly feed that battery that's in there now they've taken over 9500 orders already pre-orders for this and they do uh, i asked about production um they told me that they're going to start production at the end of 2019 so they're ramping up for that and that deliveries should start in the early part of 2020 so let's say first quarter of 2020 and the base version i believe is starting at 25,500 euros thank you very much sono motors for keeping me uh, in tune with what's going on with you guys because i can't be out there and and watch you guys close i'd love to get back out to germany at some point hopefully maybe this year i'll have a chance to go back we'll have to wait and see but uh, uh keep an eye on those guys and if you've got one on order um, please send me an email or let me know what they're telling you from uh, estimated deliveries and so forth and what your experience has been like so far with their with the pre-order and with some of the communications i'd love to get your feedback and uh, all the best for sono continued success on that well sticking with geneva auto show mercedes-benz revealed an eqv long-range concept um, minivan basically or multi-passenger uh, multi-passenger vehicle mpv as we call it or the industry likes to call it a uh, pretty good looking vehicle i mean i know that i knew that minivans and this type a little bit bigger transportation i mentioned station wagons on the last show would start to come into purview for a lot of manufacturers because there's a huge market there i mean the only electrified passenger stuff really i mean other than the vw is doing some stuff now um but is really the the chrysler 
um, uh, van hybrid that they have uh, currently, um, but it's a very small battery, so and it's not available in the whole market. So I'm glad to see Mercedes get into this game. It looks like it's going to be up to an eight seat vehicle uh, with a hundred kilowatt hour battery pack, so a, a decent sized battery to give it about 400 kilometers or 250. Uh, don't know the test cycle on that, but we could probably guess it's going to be WLTP because that seems to be the, the standard now that most European manufacturers are defaulting to when they come out with these announcements. Um, so decent range. It's going to have 150 kilowatt motor in that to give it some decent heft and um, you know fast charging capabilities uh, all the standard stuff it doesn't say the speed of the fast charging but you know it can give you 100 kilometers in 15 minutes so it's going to be fairly significant i think based on the battery size and top speed of 100 miles an hour or 160 kilometers an hour so that's that's probably mid-range spec for the autobahn if you've been on the autobahn you'll know that uh, 160 kilometers is nothing really that's you're just getting up there on the autobahn but uh, they'll be able to keep up a bit so good for them uh keep your eyes tuned on mercedes and to see what they they talk about they haven't talked uh, revealed any dates production numbers pricing anything like that this is just kind of their concept teaser but the vehicle does look like it's it's pretty close to a production look and feel so I, I think that what we're seeing here is going to be again fairly close to what they'll actually start delivering and start producing in the near future i would suspect because they're just uh, announcing it now probably won't see anything till 2020 uh, 2020 is going to be a magical year but uh, it's great to see mercedes continuing on with their electrification strategy well, some of the big news in the Geneva was safe, coming from Sayat, which is part of the VW group, of course. Uh, they revealed their Elborn, which is the first long-range electric hatchback that they've come out with. Uh, it's getting a lot of press because uh, it's a really slick-looking car, and it kind of you know fits that nice uh, compact car space, which is big in Europe especially, but and not so bad here in, in Canada and in the U.S. and in, in North America. It's based on the shared Volkswagen MEB platform, which is great. You, you're going to see a you're going to hear a lot about this MEB platform not coming just from VW by itself, but from all its subsidiaries. And I've talked about some of them before. They're making this platform available for all their companies. And in fact, I think they might even make it available for other car companies to use to help them get into electrification a lot easier. Smart move, right? Build some of the fundamentals and get those out there. You can make a pretty good living, uh, make some money doing that as well. It's not a bad idea. Um, and these are going to be manufactured in the uh, Zwickau plant. And I talked about that a few shows ago alongside with the ID that will be coming out in 2020, starting in uh, built in Germany. Looks like Seat's decided to use the 62 kilowatt hour battery. Um, as a starting point for this to give it uh, in L WLTP range of 420 kilometers, 261 miles, uh, 150 kilowatt motor, a lot of standard uh, specs, going to have a heat pump, which is good for the colder climates, um, 0 to 62 miles or 100k uh, ramp up speeds of about seven and a half seconds. So decent okay it doesn't need doesn't need to do three or four seconds in my opinion and you can get fast charging up to 100 kilowatt fast charging uh really decent specs no no idea on, on pricing yet that i can see in the announcement so good luck on sayat i hope they come out with more i think they've they're talking about even some suvs and some other platforms that they'll electrify in the not so distant future more choice is great, folks. So uh, too bad they don't sell them here. I'd love to see the, them come into the North American markets, but I think they're going to do very well in Europe and the markets that they, uh, that they play in. So keep your eye on Sayat. Well, Audi isn't done with electrification either, and even though they're getting a little bit of flack for extending deliveries on the uh, the initial e-tron and so forth, they continue to pump out uh, electrified announcements. And the uh, one of the com things coming from Geneva is their new Q4 e-tron concept and it's kind of a little bit of more of a compact electric crossover so smaller than the current e-tron that's out with about 280 miles of range expected to come out around the end of 2020 and no surprise from them because of their their situation on ramping up and getting batteries and all that kind of stuff that they need to do so I think a year out a year and change out from now is probably a, a, a correct statement uh, again, it's a concept, but looking at these pictures, folks, it looks pretty close to a reality. It's it's kind of a smaller e-tron, you know, current e-tron out there. It's going to have dual motors um, with a 
combined power output of 225 kilowatts, 82 kilowatt hour battery. I think it's the same one that's in the current e-tron to provide 280 miles of range. So it might be, I know the e-tron has been slammed with some, it's not the greatest efficient EV on the market. Well, it's an SUV. It's not really supposed to be that efficient, right? It's not going to be a Lamborghini or Dynamics or anything, but that, you buy an SUV for other reasons, not necessarily efficiency. Um, so I think this one will be a bit more efficient because a little lower, a little, you know, smaller footprint, a little, little less weight obviously but with the same battery pack or, or a good size battery to provide 280 miles of range probably wltp yes it is you can do the math on what that is in in metric uh, 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds, like an all-wheel drive, of course, uh, it launches a little quicker, gets you more stability, and maximum speed of 180. These, uh, this max, Most maximum speeds, by the way, are electronically limited, so they just, manufacturer just says, that's it, I'm cutting power when you hit this speed, and you're not going to be able to juice it up more uh, to get more to the motors. But 180 kilometers an hour, 112 miles an hour is pretty darn fast. Um, you know, I've been on the Autobahn doing about 230, 240 kilometers an hour, and uh, that's pretty darn fast, and even I'm getting past at those speeds so uh, this will more than be capable to keep up with uh, some of the stuff out there one thing i like about uh, the e-tron is this virtual cockpit so the, the digital displays 12 point inch touch screens um, everybody's kind of going that same approach now which is really nice to see um, pricing hasn't been officialized um, and again, this is part of the VW Group umbrella with using the MEB platform, that modular electric drive toolkit, which is you're going to hear more and more, as I said, uh, moving forward. So good to see Audi continue with this. It's a slick looking vehicle. I like it. I like the interior. You know, again, I had a chance to, to snoop around the uh, e-tron here in the Toronto show a couple of few weeks ago. Looked at the plastics and the materials, and it's just a well-built, nice-looking, very, very finished vehicle. So I think this is going to do well because that compact SUV is a marketplace that's on fire, and that's going to continue to be on fire. So good luck on Audi, and we'll keep tracking this vehicle's progress for you. Well, cuteness, of course, surrounds auto shows when it comes from the folks like Fiat, because you know sometimes you just want to wrap your arms and hug these vehicles that Fiat comes out with. Well, they're finally stepping up a little bit harder into the electrified game as well. They've unveiled their concept, uh, Cent uh, Cento Venti um, electric. It's up to 311 miles of range. Here's some pictures of it. It's definitely a retro vehicle. They've used the word retro probably 20 times uh, in some of their communique. Uh, it's got that funky look, that youthful vibe going. It's definitely going to work. Um, and they're taking a little bit different approach where this is going to be not only a very affordable, and they're talking about one of the market's most affordable electric mobility solutions. So I guess they're looking at the European price point and saying this is going to come in really attractive when we get it out there. Uh, they are building this on a modular battery pack system as well that allow owners to extend the car's range um, from starting from 60 miles to up to 311 miles. So you can you can purchase this in different configurations. Um, it could be just between the two or it could be multiple steps. Now, um, obviously, and they've also said that the vehicle itself is going to be entirely customizable. So if, if you're looking to get into something that you can really personalize and make your own, this could be a good fit for you. The, not only from an exterior, for colors and, and different uh, methods, different things you can bolt on and, and uh, undo with that vehicle, but also in the interior, in the cabin as well. It's a plug and pr play principle. So owners apparently that they're saying you can add and remove items from the dash. So some sort of modular concept there um, from an in, even in, from an interior. Now there's no idea of production timelines yet. This is a concept vehicle, but I think as I've been saying over the last few shows, I'm covering the auto shows and seeing a lot of concepts. I think what we're seeing in in some, probably the majority of concepts that come out now are, are fairly baked vehicles uh, as far as what we may see that take it from concept into pre-production into a prototype and into production. So uh, keep your eye on Fiat though, but it looks like they are firmly committed to electrification and they're going to move forward with this. So I would say we, we probably will see more news on this uh, in some releases for 2020 model year, probably the latter part at this point, but we'll see how fast Fiat can spool this up, but it looks pretty cute. And if anybody has more information, they hear something, <clears throat> I don't know if they're taking pre-orders on this right now, but if anybody gets more info, please send it my way so I can report on it. And uh, good luck on Fiat. Final uh, cons final uh, show car for this uh, episode from Geneva. Uh, VW came out, uh, debuted the all-electric Volkswagen ID buggy concept. 
at the motor show. And if you're familiar with VW dune buggies of the days of, uh, you know, booting around beaches in California and other places on these things, people had tons of fun. Well, this buggy looks very retro back to those days. It's uh, again built on that modular electric drive matrix platform, the MEB platform. Very, very retro. Um, it's extremely versatile on how you can build this thing and how you can customize it. It's a pure two seater. There's, if there's going to be a back seat, uh, it might have to be some sort of conversion uh, because there's and because you can also have an additional electric motor in there as well uh, to the front axle. It's a rear wheel a drive car uh, that they've come out with this uh, this buggy, but you can make it an all wheel drive if you need to for four wheel uh, capabilities. Modular design, so again you can mess around with the body and detach and attach stuff. Uh, probably, you know, uh, full uh, enclosure uh, hoods for it because um, it's it's an open cockpit, so you can probably close that off if you want to for colder climates but it does open up a world of possibilities for third-party manufacturers as well that can look at taking this this vehicle and outfitting it and customizing it uh, as much as they want and repackaging and selling it very minimalistic co uh, cockpit but again you don't buy these things for all the bells and whistles you buy these things to be booting over sand dunes and having fun and going crazy in it uh, but in a very safe legal manner remember that folks uh, some of the specs they've give, give out should have about 201 horsepower, about 228 foot pounds of torque, battery about 62 kilowatt hour capacity battery, giving it a WLTP range of 155 miles. If you can find 155 miles of, of straight beach, folks, go for it because that'll be a once in a lifetime event. Uh, and a all, all, all bunch of other specs, you can check out VW's website for more info and some of the articles. People are already throwing some reviews and stuff and, and uh, analyst stuff. But I wanted to bring this out. It's a, it's a hot looking machine. I think it's, it's going to be pretty fun to get this thing out there. And uh, VW should have some, some modest success with this in those markets that the, these kind of vehicles sell, especially maybe for the aftermarket side for people for uh, you know, vendors looking to buy the, the base and add on their own stuff to it and remarket it should do well for them. So again, keep a lot of action coming from VW. I've, as I've been saying, like a broken record for months. So keep your eyes continued on that. And if anybody again has more information, if they uh, are open, opening pre-orders for this, uh, no announcement of timelines that I could read in this, but I would guess it's a concept. I would guess again, the magical 2020, maybe even pushing into 2021 because VW is starting to stack up a lot of a lot of their IDs, uh, productions into that, into the next year to two years. So uh, this will fit somewhere within that. So good luck on them. All right, one last piece of information is mailbag. Haven't had mailbag for quite some time um, because most of the stuff is questions that uh, about some of the stuff that I've commented on in shows. So I answer those fairly, fairly straightforward. But I, this was a follow-up uh, to an email that I did a, a few, few months ago. Uh, and this was from uh, Johan and uh, his wife. Well, he just sent me a, a wonderful email, uh, just kind of keeping me on tap of their story and what's happening uh, as uh, their path to Model 3 ownership. And as you can see by the picture, they finally got their Model 3 delivered a couple of weeks ago. And they're, uh, they're loving their driving experience. And uh, they sent me a message saying, um, you know, they love the car and thanks for doing the show. So I appreciate the feedback. I'm glad you guys found the vehicle that you're looking for and very happy and that three-year wait was worth it. And I know many Model 3 owners, pretty well all of them are extremely happy with the car and that's great to hear. All the best to you guys and thanks for keeping me informed. And, and if there are other folks out there that want to share their stories on whether it's a Model 3 or a Leaf or whatever it is, uh, please share that with me. I'd love to hear it and uh, put some of these on the show. So thanks for sending me that information. That's the end of the show, episode 34, uh, EV Revolution show. That's it. A couple reminders about the fully charged events. Uh, I don't have any other new news since the last show, but obviously in the UK, June 7th to 9th, and in uh, Austin, Texas, the 7th and 8th of September, both of this year. Go check out Fully Charged website for information. Uh, don't I still don't think they're they're selling tickets yet, but soon. But they they might be some more updates coming up on that. So uh, again, I'll be down. At, I'll be at both of those events. I look forward to meeting some some folks, whoever can make it out for that. Big thank you to Patreon supporters. Big thank you to all you folks that subscribe and watch. Please, if you like what you uh, what you see on these shows and the effort that I put in, please uh, you know send me some comments, like it if you if you want to, and subscribe. That would be uh, uh, very important to me. And of course, talk to other people about it. Mention the show. I've been out and about talking about the show now to a lot of people and. Uh, um, be getting some good uptake people that watch it and I say you know tell me what you think I mean if you like it and the feedbacks uh, very positive so thank you for all of that so until the next show please everybody
everybody stay safe. Remember, I'm here to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. That's my motto. I just came up with that a little while ago, and I thought I'd try and throw that out there. So if you like what you hear, send me some feedback. But again, everybody stay safe, and until next time, we'll see you then. All right, bye.